So we have made it to part three. This is going to be the final part of the barrel tutorial. I didn't want to go too crazy in depth with this because the only purpose of this is to give you a, a good idea of how to get started in Blender. And after this, I think you'll be more prepared to go and maybe tackle some of the beginner tutorials and you won't feel like you're going to get as stuck because you have already gone through this. What I also may actually recommend you do is that once you finish this barrel tutorial, make a new file and start over it again, watch through the tutorial and then see how much faster you go. I found that this helped me a lot. I actually did that chest I was talking about, the treasure chest three times. First one going slowly through it, one going quick through the tutorial. And then the last part, I tried to do it on my own. And I did get stuck a couple times, but I found that that really helped me get all of the controls I needed. But something that is important to understand about Blender. Oh, sorry, let's actually go back to layout for this. Once we have everything ready to go though, you can hit zero on your number pad, or you can just hit this button right here. And now we can kind of get the barrel in view. So let's hit N if this will open up the tab over here. If this isn't open, then like I said, hit N to open it. Let's go to view, camera to view. And when you do that, you should see this red line going around the camera. And now if you scroll in and out, you can move the camera inside of the view. If this isn't locked, then you can't scroll around. And if you actually move it around, the camera is going to stay where it is. So we want to have it camera to view for this. I'm also going to go over to the scene information or the output property. Sorry, I'm going to go to resolution. Let's make that 1500. And then let's zoom in a little bit. So looking at this, I kind of want this angle for the barrel, maybe up a little bit, but I don't want to be able to see anything going on in the background. So let's hit tab and make sure that you're clicked on the plane. Sorry tab to let's hit G and Y. We'll drag it out this way until it's out of the frame. Then we'll click on this edge, G and X, drag it over this way. But by doing that, we have kind of messed up how our texture looks. So let's hit zero to get out of the camera mode. Let's hit tab. So we're in the object mode so we can click around right now. Let's click on the plane. You want to hit control and a and you should see this apply menu pop up and we're going to apply the transformation so as of right now blender is still thinking this of this plane as the original size plane whereas in reality it's or it's it's thinking of it as a much smaller plane so that's why i'm saying the scale is 10 10 10. so what we're going to do is we're going to hit control a all transformations we're going to hit tab oh sorry click on the barrel tab three, U to unwrap, and then we're going to do cube projection. So that makes everything a little bit more in line, I guess. But from there, let's just go back into shading and we'll just change this value to five. And now it looks a little more natural, I suppose. Now that we are back in the layout, let's hit zero to go back in the camera view. And this actually needs to come back out a little bit. I don't know how I missed that. Okay, perfect. Let's save it. So you can just hit control S. I recommend really getting used to hitting that hotkey because it, it'll save you a ton of grief down the road, or you can just come up here and hit save. But let's take a look at how our scene looks in the rendered mode. Okay, you know, not bad. But I, since I made a new file, it's in Eevee, but let's go to cycles because this is the one where I think looks really cool. So this is much more realistic lighting. I really like how that looks. So what we can do is let's hit zero to get out of this mode. Let's click on our light. So you can either click right here. If you can't find it, just come up and click there. Now we're going to hit alt and D. This will duplicate the light, but it will make them linked. So it's a weird way of describing this, but when you hit shift D, you're making two separate objects that are not linked. If you hit alt and D, it's creating the same object, but in two places. So what I can now do is I can go over here. So when you have the light selected, you get this menu here. And if I actually increase the radius, you can see that the sphere around them is actually increasing. And if I change the color, they're both changing. Control Z. And let's just make that back down to where it was. But that is just really important to know because it just helps you light up your scene. So let's pull this back a little bit 
just because I don't want it to be too overpowering. I did want to light this up, but I still want that strong shadow coming from this side. So let's hit zero. Now, I am going to be putting an HDRI into this, but I am just going to do a little test render with you. Let's set the samples to 25. So go up to the render properties here, render 25, denoising. Let's turn on optics for the render and then viewport. This will just automatically denoise it in the viewport. So it looks a little bit better. Get a, I guess, a better idea of how it's going to look. And then let's go down to performance, tiles. Let's change. If you're using GPU, typically the best one is to click 512. But a nice little tip is that you can click on tiles X and then go down and it will select both of them at the same time. So once you have them both selected, you can type in, you know, 64, 152, and that works for all objects like that. So you can kind of drag it and go down. And for those of you that don't know, you can actually just, you don't have to actually click and type it in. It's both a slider and an input box. So that's really nice to know. But let's just hit F12 and see how our first little render looks. So since I started a new Blender file, I actually did make a mistake. I have the device set now to CPU because I opened a new file and I didn't save the, I didn't make it the default in the previous one. So let's go to device, GPU compute, and now this will go much faster. You should only, I think when you hit F12 again, typically you're only gonna see the one square going around the screen, but you can see how much faster that was as opposed to the last one. The CPU took about 17 seconds to render this, whereas my 3090 GPU took three seconds. And the reason why I'm just doing 25 is because you don't need to go really overboard when you first start doing this with the samples. Uh, in, in a scene like this, there's not gonna be too much noise and you do have a denoiser. So don't wait, if you don't have a great graphics card, you know, you don't have to go crazy. Like the final render is only going to be about 200 and even that might be overkill. Now the lighting is good, but let's add in the HDRI because that's always a lot of fun. So we're going to pull up our browser again. We are going to go to Holly Haven HDRIs. And you can really just pick whatever you want. So you can you can get pretty creative here. You can do an outdoor scene. You can do an indoor scene. I'm thinking the one that I always really like is the peppermint factory here. So let's click on it. I'm going to, I'm going to get an 8k HDRI because I may try and incorporate it in the scene a little bit, but, uh, you can just do 1k. It, it, this part doesn't really matter. The only thing that changes with HDRIs is the actual image itself. All of the lighting that we are going to get from the HDRI is built in automatically. And that is the purpose of this. I Maybe I should have explained that better. The reason why we're getting HDR, an HRI is not only is it a background image, but it also lights up your entire scene and it looks really, really good. So let's download this and that should now be downloaded. So let's pop back into Blender. And what I'm actually gonna do just for this moment is I'm gonna take these lights up here and I'm just gonna click them off so that we just have our generic background light here. Let's save it. And then let's go over to, this is the world properties, I believe. Click on the yellow dot here next to color and then go to the environment texture. When you click it, everything should turn pink because Blender is looking for a texture that it cannot find. And that is, this color is what Blender does. If it, if you say, okay, like link this wood to the barrel and you delete the wood texture from your folder, Blender can no longer find it. And now it's just going to be a pink texture. So if you ever see that, that's the reason why it's looking like that. Let's open and downloads. Type in dot HDRI. I have quite a few of them, sorry, but let's do the peppermint plant. And then you can see right away that there is lighting. And you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to click on my rings. I'm going to make this 0 0.05 because now we're getting some of the reflections from the background. You have to aim it up a little bit, but maybe, 
Yeah, I actually kind of like that. So maybe I will kind of have it so it's up like this. Let's adjust this a little bit to like 0 0.1 so it's not so reflective. Uh, maybe 0.2 was good, actually. Yeah, I think that that's good. And I don't want to see all this in the background. So let's go over to the render properties, film, transparent. And that's going to make the background disappear. And I know I was kind of fussing around with the plane, but I think that that is good enough. So let's tick these lights back on and see how everything's looking. You know, I actually think that that looks pretty good, especially for a first tutorial. So let's zoom in a little bit more on it. And let's go to render 200. And then for the final, let's do... Uh, actually, you can keep that. You can keep that at 1500 if you want. I'm going to do 3000 by 3000 just so that we get a, a sharper image. But I'll save this. And then let's just hit render. F12. Okay, so overall, I don't think that that was, as I said, too bad of a render. Hopefully everyone's came out looking fairly similar. It may have taken a bit longer to render. As I mentioned, I do have a 3090, and I know that not everyone has a graphics card that's like that. I also designed it so that it wouldn't take up too much room on your graphics card. If you have a two gigabyte graphics card, you will actually be able to get everything onto the scene with that. So that is really good to know. If you found this series helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. I I've had some people recently asking me, you know, how do I get into Blender? Like I got stuck or I got frustrated. And so I wanted to make a beginner's tutorial that really could appeal to the person that had, had no idea what they were doing in Blender. This is, there are some things that may seem a little difficult at first, but I didn't want to make it too far out of reach that you wouldn't be able to, but I also didn't want to make it so easy that you didn't have to struggle at least a little bit, or you didn't get stuck once or twice. If I was able to do that, I'm very very happy about it because if you now go and do another blender tutorial even the donut tutorial from the blender guru you will have a much easier time now because you're not going to be fiddling with everything and you're going to be able to just have a i guess a better understanding of how you apply basic textures how you uv unwrap something in a very basic way if you found the series helpful i'd really appreciate it if you can give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel now that i have split all of my channels out this channel is going to be dedicated only to blender which personally one of my my passion projects i really really enjoy using blender and we're going to be doing everything from archviz to geometry nodes to just more modeling like this and i'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of you in that i'm going to end it there for the night though thank you so much for everyone that stopped by this tutorial and i do hope i'll see you in future videos have a great night